Hell on Earth, presented by Dr. Narco Longo. A Finnish perspective on Tartaria, Atlantis, and the Old World. It will be shown that the Finnish people directly descend from the original elven nobility of the Old World. The Finnish people are the Phoenicians of antiquity. Their root language and writing system operated much like a franchise, as it was exported around the world and refigured to fit the needs of the tropical races who lacked writing systems altogether after the recent Ice Age slash reset. The names Finnish, Phoenician, Finnegan, Venetian, Elven, Fairy, Osser, Cro-Magnon, and Proto-Indo-European all refer to this source race of civilization that spread agriculture and writing across the planet around 10,000 years ago. The views expressed in this video do not necessarily reflect my own. Now enjoy. Oh, from the time, actually, from the time before Christian religion, it was very peaceful here. Uh, there had never been any war here in Finland. And in Finnish language, we don't have, even today, we don't have a word for a war. We don't have, the, the, the word we use it, of course we have a word for it, but it's a, it's a root word, and it means ash. It means ash. Nothing else but ash. And when the uh, king of Sweden came here 1248, he heard for the first time that there is a place in the world where never has been any war. These people, in the root language, we call them Hedni. In the Vaan language, the Finnish language, we call them Paakana. And in the English, we call them pagan. So this story comes from a time we call pagan times, or the times before the church, before the three religions we know. This small little country, Finland, who was the, the head of the whole pagan dome of the planet. Helsinki has, this hell has always been the main place for the whole world. That was also something that I just could not believe it. Not for many, many years. Mm -hmm. But now I do believe it. That just because of this, uh, this uh, traces that I have found from Egypt and India and China. For, uh, I can see the... Uh, I can think that who the, who the people were, how they worked. In hell, or what we call Helsinki today, the new name for hell, destroyed by the Catholics in 1050. In the year 1550, they rebuilt it and called it Helsing Forest or Helsinki. But the original name for Helsinki was called Hell or Helstan, Udenmaf. And in the Paradise time, there was one. Ringland here called Udenma. If you still go to Helsinki, you can ask anybody where Udenma is and they'll say you're standing in Udenma. So it's still one name that they, they know about today. When we lived in this planet, when it was completely tropical, there was no ice. Where we're standing now was tropical plants instead of Arctic plants. But these people in the Paradis time, we were all brown. We all had brown eyes. We were all vegetarian on this whole planet. Before, it was a 24-hour golden circle of light, banana papaya up here, 50 million, 10,000, 32 years ago. The axle of this planet tilted over. The sea evaporated to the top of the ball, and the east, or ice, came down. And the whole top of this planet was covered in ice, kilometers deep in 90 days. 
So all the lands became ice, except for this one area around the Baltic Sea, where we sit today, a few, few kilometers from this coast over here. And there's this warm water that comes from the Gulf of Mexico. Still today, it's called the Gulf Stream. And this warm water coming from this Gulf of Mexico came across the Atlantic Ocean up the coast of Norway. It was one stream of water that constantly brought warm water up to the top of this planet. So as this warm water came up and came to this ice cap, it hit the ice cap and was rerouted down the coast of Norway and went into the Baltic Sea, the Gulf of Finland. So this warm water has been rerouted in and as this ice came down, it melted and created one hole in the ice. All of this area around the Baltic Sea, within a few kilometers of the coast, uh, it didn't freeze. And so as this warm water came into the Baltic Sea, it created one warm zone where these people, they could survive. They survived this ice, but now they're, they're trapped in ice. They're in isolation and they have no contact with the rest of the planet. But this small group of people who got trapped in this isolation in this place we call Alt Land East, All Lands Ice, which is Frankenland, France, Switzerland, Saxon Land, Ireland, Scotland, England, Svealand, Sweden, Denmark, Donland, Norland, Finland, Rusland, Greenland, all these lands were ice. Below the Pyrenees Mountains, you have Spain, Portugal, Italy, Morocco, Argentina, Gambia. There's no lands below this ice system. Today we have New Zealand, named by the Dutch. We have Swaziland, we have Thailand, but these are all new names. And over a long, long, long period of time, we started to lose the pigment in our skin. From brown, we start to get lighter and lighter and lighter. Our brown hair started to get lighter and lighter and lighter, and our brown eyes slowly, slowly became blue and green eyes. So in the saga, it says the original white people on the planet came here in the Finland during this ice age. From a lack of sun, from a lack of light, over a long, long period of time, we became what they call one article race of people. In this system, there was usually the father and the mother, 12 sons and seven daughters. But in this Atlantis system, since they weren't making so many people, they had only the mother, the father, seven sons and seven daughters. So they made a smaller system. But now with this ice, these people had to, to change everything. We became with four seasons. In this situation, these people, they started to create agriculture because they needed to store food for the winter, which we didn't need in the tropics. So they made four seed, the wheat, the barley, the oat, and the rye. And we could store this food in this seven months of nice weather around this coast, and then four months of complete dark frozen. So these people, they had to store food for this four or five months of this dark winter that they have still here today. They also started to create what we call article domestic animals, because now for the first time in the history, we had to start eating meat. And before the ice time, we had one animal called the goat. They had no feeling to eat this goat. So from the goat, over a long, long period of time, these people started, this goat started to develop into different animals. And from the goat, they made the cow, the pig, and the sheep. These are article, domestical animals created by these Osir people inside of Altlantis. So they had food to eat, meat to eat in this winter time. From the peacock, a tropical bird, beautiful, they had no feeling to eat the peacock. So from the peacock, over a long period of time, they made it into the chicken. From the dove, they made the pigeon, which we can also eat the pigeon. 
So these people, they started to create agriculture, domestic animal, a completely different life than we had in the Paradis. From the palm tree, they started to create what we call the evergreen trees, these trees that stay green all year long. These are, these are the product of a long period of time coming from the palm tree, but they grow very quickly because they needed much wood to burn in this four months of complete darkness and cold. So they created new trees, they created article animals, domestic animals to eat, and agriculture in these four, five months of cold, freezing, dark weather. They stayed inside. All their children were born in the end of March. So these children inside these small houses, they had holes in the walls so they could pull one cork, one plug from the wall. And the sun, Udin, could shine one strala into this small house so these children, the mothers could hold these babies. And as this strala of light, they could put this light of the sun onto the head of this baby so it could get sun because we need the sun. In May, they could come out, and from May, June, July, August, September, October, November, they could live outside. They could create what they needed. But come December, January, February, March, they had to go back inside. And these people, they're living inside this Atlantis time. Many, many millions of years, the human race is much, much older than what they want to say today. For millions of years, these people lived inside this ice time. They made our games, checkers, backgammon, chess, all these games they created, the cards. The cards are 52 cards, 52, 52 weeks to the year, four seasons, 13 weeks in each season, 13 cards in each suit. So this whole card system is made on this new system of four seasons instead of one tropical season. This is the Atlantis that they talk about. The Atlantis is one story created by we first hear from a guy called Plato in Greece who said he got the story from Egypt. And this first pharaoh that went to Egypt 6,000 years ago, he was, he was from Finland, the first pharaoh. He was one white man, blue eyes, yellow hair. And he took the understanding to build pyramid down to the Egypt. And there he explained that he was one descendant of these Atlanteans. And from there, the story went to the, to the Plato. And the Plato, he wrote a few pages or a few words about this place called Atlantis, or what we call alt land East. But in Atlantis, they, it's where the white people came from. It's where the domestic animal comes from. It's from where the agriculture comes from. And that's where we are today. So this is, I don't know, this may be the first place that we can actually say this is Atlantis. 10,032 years ago, these Osir people who were living in hell, which is where Helsinki is today, they realized that they had to come out, that this Atlantis time, this ice time was about to be over with. About 97 or 9,800 years ago, they went back to the 10, the 12 brothers in the seven sisters system. And somewhere around 96, 9,700 years ago, these 10 brothers in the middle, not the first one, Ra, not the 12th one, these 10 brothers in the middle, they went out over this planet and they met up with these 10 tropical kings from these 10 tropical races, the Polynesian, the Aborigine from Australia, the Hindu from Hindustan, the Chinese from China, this old Hellas system, which was the Greek system, this Roman system, which is all these countries around this Mediterranean Sea, the South African, which was the blue man, what we call African people today, and this Inca, Mayan, and Aztec, these 10 tropical races around the planet, each was one king system from the paradise time. And these 10 brothers, they met up with these 10 tropical kings after millions of years. So the first white man met the first man with color about 96, 9700 years ago, and they took out the information of agriculture. So in China, you can see agriculture from around 10,000 years ago. South America, you can see agriculture from about 10,000. Africa, all this agriculture was one gift from the Osir to the Vonner people about 96, 9700 years ago. And these 10 brothers, they came back after they had met. So this first article, white man with this 
tropical Bonner people was around this time. These Osra people, this what we would call the Aryan race or the white race of people, they had now started to create one white race of people. But something happened in the family. Sometimes when they were trying to make many, many children quickly, they had more than 12 sons. And these more than 12 sons could be ambassadors, they could be information people going out. But in this case, two of these brothers, the 13th and 14th son, they had no title in the family because it was only the 12 sons that had the title. So these two brothers, these two kings, they wanted to become kings. So they decided not to go back to Finland, not to go back to hell, to be part of this Osra system there. And one of these brothers was called Don, and one was called Sven. And they were we two kings. They were the V-kings. And these two brothers, one Sven, he goes to Uppsala, where Uppsala, Sweden is today. And there he makes his capital. And he starts one article race of person there. And from his seed, from the seed of Sven, comes the Norwegians, the Icelandic, the Greenland people, the Scottish people, and the Irish people. They come from the seed of this Swedish king. Don, the other brother, the other of the two brothers, he goes down to Denmark. He makes the mark of Don, and mark means land, so the land of Don. And this Don, from his seed, comes two kings in Germany. I think their name is uh, Gottrip and Brandenburg. And these first two seeds is Brandenburg is where Berlin is, and this Gottrip, I think, is where the Lübeck is. I could be mistaken on this, but I put this in. But anyway, the king, the king line of Germany or Saxon, they're coming from the Danish from his seed. And from this German and from this Danish, from this source story comes the Austrian, the Swiss, the Dutch, the Holland people, the Belgian people, the English people. So the English is a different race than the Scottish and the Irish. They are another race. They're from the Sven line, whereas England is coming from the, in the Dan line, all the way down to France. So all this Western Europe is coming out from the seed of the Dan. So these two Vikings, these first two kings, 9,032 years ago, they come off from this island and they start this two more white races. There's three white races of people, there's 10 tropical races. The oldest white race is the Finnish and the Russians. These are the original white people on the planet. The second and third white people is the Dan, the Danish, and the Swedish. This pole here is the Maistan, the Maypole. Where last month they had one where the girls, they go around with this, around, it's one ceremony for Maya, the queen. The word Maya is where the word maize, maize, the corn comes from, Maya, the Mayan Indians, and in Hindu, Maya means illusion. And it's where our word May comes from, the month of May comes from Maya. So my, in my, in May, is when they make the, the my stone, the maypole dance. It's in one honor of Maya, the queen. Then finally, there are Maya, who could wander the earth unseen, or choose forms like elves and men, and assisted the Aenar. This beautiful little girl at the bottom, she is called Maya. And this is the young Maya, she is going to be the queen. Maya is the queen in our story. Her brother Ra, or heirs, is the king. And this instrument that he's playing, this string instrument, is called one kantele. This is one of the first instruments, music instruments on the planet, from the harp. Uh, to, learn, to learn the oldest uh, possible history, when we cut those long words, finished words, or, or root words, even, but uh, the uh, syllables, they, they were telling this most oldest possible history. That's how I got into Egypt, too. And in the pagan times, people lived according to mythology. The Greek mythology, the Roman mythology, the Red Indian has his mythology, the Hindu has his mythology. Uh, the Scandinavians have their mythology. So before there were 
the whole planet lived according to one word called mythology or mythology. Myth is one story and logi means logic. So it's one story with logic, myth, logi, mythology, mythology. Tolkien was struck by how the Finnish tales had an earthy poetic logic, quite unlike anything he had come across. I am very fond of these poems, he declared in his 1914 lecture. They are literature so very unlike any of the things that are familiar to general readers. They are so un-European and yet could only come from Europe. Unlike the kindred mythology of Europe, he observed with the stories of the Kalevala, you are at once in a new world, he said, and can revel in an amazing new excitement. You feel like Columbus on a new continent. Tolkien saw it as significant to an appreciation of the Kalevala that Finland was one of the last lands in Europe to convert to Christianity thereby leaving a more recent legacy of paganism than traced in other European countries. It was not only the remarkable mythopoetic stories of the Kalevala that inspired Tolkien, but also the phonetic resonance of the language that led him to study Finnish grammar and to develop his own legendary language, which he called Quenya. This elfish language, known to all fans of the Peter Jackson films, was inspired by the languages that Tolkien said gave him the greatest pleasure, Finnish and Greek. Discovering Finnish was, Tolkien wrote to Auden, like discovering a complete wine cellar filled with bottles of an amazing wine of a kind and flavour never tasted before. It quite intoxicated me, he wrote. Tolkien was clearly drawn to the story of Clairvaux and the tales of the Kalevala, because not only did they represent a rich, primitive and poetic mentality of a people undetached from nature, but because they told in a visceral and lyrical manner of the perennials of human love and suffering. Not only of the magical entities, but also of very human characters who behave with a singular lack of conventional dignity and with a readiness for tears and dirty dealing. Why read of Calervo and the Kalevala? Well, let's get Tolkien to answer this one. As he said, you should read the Kalevala for the delight of the earth, the wonder of it, the essential feeling as of the necessity for magic, that juggling with the golden moon and silver sun that is man's universal pastime. These are the things to seek in the Kalevala. So this castle is called Rase Burg or Rase Puri. Ra is because this is where the king and the queen of Finland, this is the king and the queen of actually the planet. This is where the race of human beings are coming out from. The oldest castle on the planet. This is the oldest castle on the planet, 9,030 years old. And this ruin of this castle these foundation stones are from 9,030 years ago. The Finnish government wants to put this thing at the 15th century or something, but the castle is actually 9,034 years old. And this is where the race of human beings, they came out from here. And this is the race of all human beings on this planet. We all come from this, this ringland here called Asgard or Hell or Os Hell, or Midgard, had many names, this, this land. Today we call it Udinma, and Udin is the sun, Udin is the ring, Udin is everything. Ma means the land, so it's the land of Udin. It's the sun land, which was surrounded by one sun going around and around in one circle. Flame of Udin! Finally, Gandalf calls the Balrog Flame of Udin. The flame bit's easy as it's a fiery demon, but Udun is less clear. Udun was the place where Morgoth's main fortress was in the north, and was where the Balrogs originally came from. This is what we would call the court of the Asur. And Asur are the highest family 
on the planet. The Aenor then used music to create the universe. It had towers, the King Tower, the Queen Tower, the big tower is called Rabel Tower. Around this castle was a lake before. This man standing here, he's making the field, but this was all one lake, and in the middle of the lake was this granite stone. There was cost there from the beginning of the planet, from granite. And on top they built this castle, and around this castle was a lake with beautiful swans swimming around. And this castle was covered with a white, not marble, but a white chalky kind of stuff. So this was a white castle in the middle of a lake. And in the story, this is called, this is the cap, the castle of the Osir. This is the sound, ah, bay. Bay means bori or castle. And in this story, I'll explain something called Yehovah. It was one system we had from before. And this castle is the hove. Hove means the court. The sound ah is the osir and ye means to give. So we were giving to the hove, to the, the court of the osir. It was one giving system. All this was destroyed by the Catholics in 1050. They knew that this Christian church had made two arms. The Roman Catholic was coming up through Europe coming this way, and the Greek Orthodox were heading towards Russia, this other way, from Constantinople. And they knew that this Christian dome was coming to destroy hell, because they had already written in their book that hell was the worst place on the planet and uh, only the bad people go there. There came 30,000 men from the Vatican who came to Udenma, and they made a ring around Udenma, and they came to the middle and they killed all the Finnish people here. And so at this time, the Finnish people, they lost their history. The Finnish people have been here many, 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 many years. But the history, they don't know where they come from, the Finnish people. When the church came here, they destroyed. The first pope called Leo IX from Saxon, from Germany, what we call Germany today. And this Leo the Ninth had to do one system where they were trying to eliminate the old pagan dome of the planet. And so this Leo the Ninth, the Pope from 1049 to I think 1054, he organized one army from at the time called Helvetia, today called Switzerland. And he paid with gold from the Vatican 30,000 mercenary army to come up and kill everybody in the south of Finland because they had to destroy this hell because in their book they had just already written that hell was the worst place on the planet whereas the pagan people understood hell is is the center of the pagan planet that was forbidden uh, from the that came from Vatican from the Pope himself because uh, these things uh, that had been done here uh, and used, they were against the Finnish uh, books, history books. They actually stopped there at uh, 1248, when uh, the, actually the uh, Vatican forces invaded Finland. Uh, 1050 and uh, they drew uh, all the people away from from the southern part of Finland this Udenland and this army came and they destroyed this castle today it's one ruin but today it had before it had towers it's not one castle made for for defense it was one castle made for baptism before we had a different baptism system than we have today. In Finnish language, the word koste means to baptize, you koste. And if you put L on the koste, you come with the word kostel or castle. So the castle was one place of baptism before we had a different system for baptism. I'll explain. It's a very beautiful place. We've been here many, many times. It's 
not so far from the coast. Rasaburg, Rasapuri, Rasaburg. The king and the queen of Finland, they fled from Udenma in the year 1050 when the Catholic Church came up to kill everybody in southern Finland. The king and the queen, they escaped. They came up here. It's about 500 kilometers or so north of where they were uh, in Rasapuri. And here they lived for 250 years as uh, hell was burned and uh, South Finland was basically destroyed by the church. In hell, Helsinki, there are seven hills which had seven temples. And out a few kilometers in front of Helsinki, there's seven islands. We're coming to one island called Susisari. And the old name for Susisari was called Udin's, er, Udin's Island, the Sun Island. This name here is put here by the Catholics, which means Wolf Island. Backwards, Susi, Isus, Jesus, the island of Isus. So this island that we're about to go to here is the true North Pole from before ice times. It is the, the top of the axle as it stood straight up before the ice came on the planet when we tilted. But this whole story is based around this center point uh, in this island. It's a place we call Valhalla. And Valhalla for the Vikings, for the Swedish mythologies, is a place where all the soul goes to. It's like their, their version of what the Christians would call heaven. And in this story, this island, at one time was the very North Pole. And still today, the actual, the actual pole uh, axle of the planet is still based in this hill, in the top of this hill. This planet is one ball, and in the middle of the ball is one lance. And today we're tilted over we're out of balance. The story does have a little future to it. It says we're getting ready to tilt back up and we'll be in balance again. We'll be in harmony with the moon. The true, true North Pole, not the top of the planet, not where the ice is on top, but the true, if you went to the top of the true axle of the planet, Today we sit like this, we're not sitting on the top like this, in this point, and we spin like this. If you go to the actual true North Pole of the, it's on this island right here. This is the, the absolute, and if you went straight up from here into the space, you'll come to the North Star. So the North Star is based on top of this axle of the planet. It's the pole star, the Polaris, the backside. If you come from this way to this way, you'd make another line that goes around the planet and it divides the planet into four hemispheres or four pieces. And those four hemispheres, the four corners of the world, they meet at this hole in the top of the pole of the planet. And in the top of this pole, there is one hole in the bedrock, in the granite. It's still there today. They have it covered up, but it would be very easy to be to to take some wood up and show where this where this story is based out of because this story says that everything, the whole human race came out from this island in this situation, which I'll explain in the story. This Udenma, the hole in the top of the E and the land around this is called the Holy Land. This is the original Holy Land. Israel is not the Holy Land. There's no hole in the top of the E in Israel. The story got changed in the history. So we're standing exactly in the middle of the true Holy Land. Uh, I had been reading one book about one uh, Greek person named Butheas, Butheas, that came here 350 before Christianity time. He came here 
and he was uh, spending half a year here in Finland. He was explaining, uh, he was made, made, making a report of that stay and he was uh, studying that, uh, how long the uh, sun is up and uh, when it starts and going down and so he was here half a year. He was saying, he was uh, writing on his report that they are uh, root speaking people and they are worshipping uh, Isis and uh, they are the uh, holy Hyperborean people, I say. Yeah, he was also saying that these were very uh, virtuous, vir virtuous people because they have never had any war here. And they have no any violence here. A uh, root uh, word, God, it means uh, virtuous. Not it does not mean any any uh, anything in the in the sky, but uh, regular people that they were so virtuous, they were good behaving people. Here was a law, no, it it's not it it, it was a custom rather that had been here always that women were just equal as men with men, and if you. If somebody is going to rape a woman, he was uh, the the custom was such that that man uh, was slain dead. And uh, when the king of Sweden came to here, 1248, he heard that here is such a life that we. We uh, price the women just as good as men, mm -hmm. that they are equal. Anyway, this man who came here 350 before Christ, the Christian time, he made a report of that, and then uh, he take it. Uh, he took it to Egypt, and there was a, a new uh, library in Alexandria in Egypt, and he took it there. And uh, 100 years later, the head of that library, he wrote the book about uh, this, uh, where this report was also included in it. Mm -hmm. He wrote the book uh, by the name Argonautica, mm -hmm. in, and it's uh, saved, it's now in English, mm -hmm. and it's here in the, in the university library, I found it there, but this uh, uh, president of Estonia had also found that book and written his own book, uh, where also this was uh, said that this was such a peaceful place, mm -hmm. uh, paradise time. Mm -hmm. Paradise. Paradise, yes. And uh, that's again when we put it in the parts, paradise et. And so when we take those each part uh, uh, out of it, then we can know what was happened and what was done here. It's from a time we have no idea the human being was even living. It's the time we call the pa ra dis, or in English we call it the paradise. And Pear is our father. We're all sons and daughters of Pear. We're Pear sons. He's our parent. We come from his sperma. So for us in our story, Pear is father. Ra is his son. Ra is the king. Ra is making the Ras, the race of people. And Ra represent the moon, not the sun, as we think today, as the Egyptians say. The light side of the moon is the masculine side. And the dark side of the moon is the feminine. And the feminine doesn't mean, the dark doesn't mean negative in the story. The dark it just means the mystical side. So para, 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 de, the two, the father and the son. Para, di, di means to drink. And S is the son in our sound system. So the para, dis is the father 
and his son they de the son and the son I'll explain this later on in our story the son has always been the son will always be it's not a star it's really the source it's our soul our soul comes from the solar it all goes to the sun and the sun uh, we call Sulin and uh, what we call the root language which is the first language on the planet and uh, the second language on the planet we call Von language which they call it Aurinko which is the Finnish language itself in English we call it sun but if a seven-year-old boy comes to me and says Jim who's making up this life where where does these trees come from where does the ocean where do you where does this stick come from I simply say the Sun if the Sun doesn't shine there's no light there's no life there's nothing there's no consciousness it's absolute black darkness the moon gets its light from the Sun according to the story Mars Juniors Jupiter Venus these all get their lights from the Sun and this earth Everything we see here, these plants, this stick, me, this camera, everything is made from the sun. If the sun doesn't shine, there is no movie going on. There is no life. There is no light. Every conscious thought is only here because the sun shines. If the sun didn't shine, there would be no light, no conscious, no nothing. And the small boy can understand if the sun doesn't shine, there is nothing. So, in this understanding that the sun is the source of all that we know even in our story the stars are reflections of the sun there's only one sun there's only one moon there's only one planet and there's millions and millions of stars according to this we have much feeling for the sun and the moon because these two are what control everything that we know our gravity our water everything without the sun there is nothing and in our story there is nobody who made the Sun there's not some what we would call one God who lives in the space somewhere out there who made the Sun on the first day this uh, this is one belief there is truth in it uh, I didn't know at the beginning that how much truth but I found out that it's much more than what I ever had thought and this, uh, because this root language is also my home language. So we were able to use three languages there, this root, Finnish and English. And uh, in each of these languages, there are some familiar words. All those words can be cut like that. And um, Finnish language, what uh, was made here in Finland. Um, uh, it was made out of this uh, root language, words. And the root language words are very short, but Finnish uh, words are very long. But it was made from several, wor uh, several root language words. And when we can uh, even uh, when I see a Finnish word, I can uh, still cut it into pieces, and uh, they they are they are root language then. So Finnish was made out of root, and uh, that was quite a, quite a thing, you know. I didn't I had not uh, I had not known it before, of course. While at university, Tolkien consistently stopped by the school libraries to borrow Finnish grammar books, hoping to one day become fluent and read his favorite childhood folk tales from the Kalevala in full. My father uh, spoke uh, not so good Finnish, but he, spoke, he was, uh, of course, uh, the root was his mother language. And my grandfather, he didn't speak at all Finnish. But, uh, and all these uh, areas here in Helsinki, for example, when I was uh, looking for my first uh, jobs here, we had to we had to be able to speak uh, root also here, or everywhere, you know. And uh, most of the people here in Helsinki were root-speaking people, but now 
most of the people here in Helsinki and all around here, they, uh, they speak Finnish mostly. And there are only some 200,000 people in Finland altogether who speak Ruth today. That how to find that oldest possible history of the world. And uh, as I was telling up there already, I got a map from Estonia uh, made on, uh, on cloth. It's uh, one meter, 35 centimeters across its round one. And the North Pole is right in the middle. There are some people here in Finland and here in Siberia. Finnish people, also in, uh, in uh, Alaska. As the Alaskan or the American Indians are saying that they have been there perhaps about 40,000 years. Uh, they had come all through Siberia and then to Alaska and going south from there, 40,000 years years ago. But uh, so late as a uh, hundred years ago, some uh, uh, Lapish people, what they call themselves Same people, uh, United States government asked some of them come to see their relatives in Alaska. They have their relatives there. So we know the families uh, which, uh, from which they are left and their families there in Alaska. And uh, Alaska, we know we can also that uh, cut all in pieces. Al ask a. Ah. It means all the, all the, um, when the body is burnt, the ash, and that ash, it means that ash, that was uh, this, uh, because uh, some, some teachers have been sent from here to Alaska and to Indians. I don't know how long time, but anyway, a very long time ago. Uh, but uh, those teachers, they had to be burned there in, in America. And, but the ashes, they were br brought back to Finland. They were brought back to Finland. Because the uh, custom here was that uh, for the men, the ash, or one, of course, they, they were burned also here in Finland, um, but the ash was put under the roots of that uh, oak tree when women were also burned here. Uh, their ashes were put under the ash tree. The, that name is still uh, ash tree, and in uh, in root it's uh, ask tree. Uh, but they were brought here, all the way from America, first to Alaska and then through Siberia, all the way to Finland. Quite a thing, you know. It's amazing, amazing thing, yes. In the paradise times, we all had family trees. In the paradise, we had the palm tree. After paradise, when the ice came, we had the oak tree. And each family had one tree that was their family tree. And when this tree, it had a very special meaning in these days. There's two words we have. One is called soul and one is called spirit. They're different, they're not the same. In the story, the name, as you take a breath in and out, you're taking the spirit in and out. The soul, which comes from the sun, the soul, the solar, the soul is inside every cell in your body. It is the life force, it's not the spirit, it's different than the spirit. And in the paradise time up until the year 1050, everybody on this planet, when we died, we were burned. And when the fire burned down, in the bottom of the fire was something called ash. And ash is the driest thing on the planet. 
And the pagan people, the heathen people, the Paakana people, they said that the soul was in the ash. Everything else had burned away, but the soul was contained in the ash. So they collected this ash. And your soul in the ash was taken to your family tree. We all belong to oak trees, what we call ek. And now your ash, your soul was, they made one hole where they put your ash, your soul, into the roots of the tree, and they covered it back up. So now you have your family tree, that all the people in your family, their ash goes underneath one tree. So when you look at one tree, your grandmother, your grandfather, your older brother, everyone who has died in your family from beginning your family, their ash was put underneath one tree. And in this process, the soul, the life, is sucked through the moisture system, through the damp system, into the root of the tree. Your soul is then becoming into what we would call, in Finnish language, mahala, or mahala they call it, mahala, mahala. In the root language we call it sav, and in English we call it sap. So the soul would go into the sap of the tree, it would rise up the stem, or the, the trunk of the tree, and from there it would go to the branch of the tree, and from the branch it would go to the leaf of the tree. Our life would go to the leaf, and the word life comes from the word leaf. So now our life, our soul, our leaf, is in the leaf. And this time we are, what you can say, you be the leaf. You be the leaf. And that's where the belief system comes from. From the leaf, the sun, which makes the soul, sucks the soul out from this green of the leaf. And now this green, the soul goes back into what we call, in the root language, centrifugal, or English centrifugal force and all the soul and all the spirit on this planet would go back into the air. Even uh, when we were under the uh, Russian Tsars, uh, Finland was uh, never uh, taken into, into Russia, actually, but uh, we were autonomic uh, state here. We were not, we did not belong to Russia. But anyway, when uh, Finnish people had been going that way all the way to Alaska and uh, to America. Uh, there were Finnish uh, governors in Alaska uh, until uh, United States bought that Alaska for them, 1907. And that's why there are some Finnish related language speaking people living all over Siberia. Their language is so different uh, from the present day Finnish that we don't understand. And they don't understand Finnish, but we know from the how it's built, built that language, that it's related to Finnish language. How old is this Finnish language? That uh, I don't know. Uh, it's many, many thousands of years old. And this, uh, this root language here is still much more older. But for example, my family name, Nygren, Nygren, it means a new tree growing from the roots. Here said that it's 6,000 or 7,000 years old. My family name. And I know, uh, when I have checked my grandfathers and grandfathers and uh, as long as possible, uh, some uh, 300 years back, they have been living always here. So that's something, that's really something. It's amazing. Yeah, mm. but if my name is really that old, as uh, this uh, uh, root language, family names, they are most often uh, the oldest of them. They are part of a tree, some certain tree. Uh, they are not the ash tree or uh, oak tree always, but anyway, some of these trees that grow here in Finland. And uh, they are, there are some ho uh, ho very 
holy trees growing here, even those uh, that we uh, use at Christmas time, when we put all kinds of uh, gifts and uh, um, uh, on the, on the tree. I remember when I was a little boy with my father, I went uh, into a forest. We cut the Christmas tree from there. <laughs> there weren't uh, so many people here, and it was nobody said that you cannot do it because the, uh, there was so very few people here still at that time. Uh, and that was only in the 1930s. I was born in 1930, and um, but. Uh, we were cutting the tree there, and uh, then uh, I do remember, later I remember, that uh, the, the things that we put on the tree, they were all from history, from as possible, or as old as possible. There was the swastika that was there, and uh, uh, there was a, a star, a yellow star like a sun, uh, on top of the tree, and there was some um, uh, Ukko and Akka, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, it was the Ukko. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you mark the OK, the letters O and mm -hmm. K, it's from the word Ukko, <laughs> the head of the family. And uh, the thunderstorm we say here is Ukko's. Uh, weather, Ukko's weather when the thunderstorm is here. <laughs> uh, still today, yes, yes, and uh, we have plenty of, plenty of uh, things uh, that I remember from those old times. So we have, uh, and these, so the swastika is very familiar to us. It's very old Finnish Christmas time uh, thing to put up. Uh, it was built every Christmas a new one. Um, it was filled uh, with the uh, yeah sulfur, yes, and uh, uh, it was uh, burned every uh, every Christmas on the sixth day of January. Sixth day of sixth day of January, it was burned. And it was sending, it was going around, and it was sending sparks uh, all around. But it was, of course, taken out out in the yard for that thing. And then, uh, when you looked that swastika from one side, you saw it uh, turning clockwise. When we, uh, when you went to the other side, you were seeing there uh, that it goes uh, anti-clockwise. -clock when it goes clockwise, then uh, it means uh, more people. It, it, it means a lot of people. And when it goes anti-clockwise, it means the knowledge. The Korva Tunturi is the Finnish name, uh, air, air uh, mountain, uh, the, which is the place where the, from where the uh, Santa Claus stories come from there. Air Mountain. They had us that we have now, uh, but much before that, uh, they knew the uh, Egypt, uh, Egyptian people. Uh, they told their history up to, uh, what was it, 12,300 before Christ. But they said that they have, their history goes quite a long way back from that time, but they don't know how many thousands of years. But uh, definitely, much it had been much before the Ice Age already. And uh, the name of Egypt in their own language is, uh, well, it will come into my mind soon. Anyway, it means book. It means book, the name of Egypt, before they had uh, anybody else there. And um, their first, that was also their first god, was book. 
Pukki in Finnish, but uh, Bok, it was in, in root. And uh, just if you look at the uh, pictures of the statues of uh, pharaohs of Egypt, they all have a bok bird. Every one of them, they had a bok bird. And they had to have it. Even when they had a, a woman pharaoh in Egypt, she had to have a bok bird also. There in, uh, then in, in Estonia place, uh, they had to be the, those uh, uh, dancing yards where they uh, ladies, girls had to dance uh, all naked and there were three women, women uh, seeing that uh, they had to be all so beautiful and so healthy as possible. Uh, those dancing yards, they, what they call, we call here in Finland, they were also called with the name uh, Troja, Troy. Uh, so when you go in there, there are seven loops that you have to go in like this, and when you, you have to stop there in the center. There are more than 200 of those left here in Finland, even today. The young men had also the same places where to dance, also naked, and of course they were, they were in the mainland, but coast line, and the women or the girls, they were on the islands. And the place for the men closest to Helsinki is there uh, 30 kilometers east from here, it's named Jerusalem, Jerusalem. But when we take it into, into parts, Jerusalem, then we know exactly what was done there. And uh, only those who, uh, who got the passing in the dancing test, they were allowed to make new people. Most people were ousted. And the fin actually those Finnish-speaking people, they were not here then yet at all. So they were only these root-speaking people here in Finland. These Finnish-speaking came much later. Although the Finnish official language was uh, made here, or uh, constructed here, so that uh, Jerusalem, who is much older than the one that is there in the Near East, this place has been here before, because yes, these uh, dancing grounds, I don't know how old they are. Uh, in in Italy, there has been found ones or some that were uh, more than 20,000 years old. Really? Yes. Amazing. Hmm. But that's also in the Chinese medicine. Uh, I'm doctor of, doctor of Chinese medicine now, mm -hmm. and I've been studying it 30 years mm -hmm. and doing uh, 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 shiatsu treatments mm -hmm. for 25 years. I know quite a lot uh, of, uh, about this uh, Chinese medicine, of course. Well, I can tell you, <laughs> I use this uh, Chinese uh, system for my living. I've never been sick. I've never been in a hospital yet. I have never seen uh, any doctor for 35, 40 years. Uh, because um, I feel and I can test myself mm -hmm. that I am absolutely healthy still today, except that uh, my memory is not uh, so sharp anymore. But that can be okay. And uh, I, can, I can feel myself how healthy I am. There are three places here three places here and uh, 
uh, from the surface or a little deeper or still more deeper going and I can feel my different uh, organs inside that are inside me. I can feel them here. Yeah, not only uh, and this this what we say heart. It's not a heart yeah. at all. In the Chinese way. Yeah. This is the heart. Chinese this way. here. Huh. That's saga too. Mm. But you women have something much more uh, fine. Uh, you have the soul. You have the soul. We men don't have the soul, no. but we have heart. Mm. Um, uh, most fine things come from the, from the soul. And uh, as we say here in Finland, that you can see from the eyes of the people that if there is a soul in that, peop in that person. Mm -hmm. And it's only you can see it from women. That's so. That's the, our kidney. That's in the kidneys. The soul is in the kidneys. Mm. Mm. Kidneys. Yeah. Mm. But what is absolutely unknown here in the Western world is the spleen. Is the spleen. Uh, the, even the no, newest books, uh, anatomy books, uh, or uh, lay, uh, doctor books, uh, uh, they are saying that they don't know what word, what uh, this uh, spleen is for, and what's its meaning, and it's also in the middle, in the middle of everything. As the Chinese say that this, what we say, heart, it's not the heart. Uh, because uh, the uh, energy line that comes from this pump, it goes here only. It is so small, so little uh, important, very little important. Uh, like my legs are completely, they represent my kidneys. And uh, yes, my kidneys. And. Uh, that's the most important. Uh, that's like a uh, basic thing, completely. And then, uh, then the energy comes here into our uh, reproducing, reproducing uh, organs here, and then, then it comes here and goes, goes to her hand right here in the center and from here to the this center finger, mm -hmm. the long finger, what we say, <laughs> you know what it means when you show it <laughs> like this. Sure. <laughs> there are, it's a, a straight one and there are both sides are, are made uh, very sharp. Those uh, sharp sides uh, they are called um, eggs in root. They are eggs. These are the eggs that we use. This, this we call eggs, not balls, but eggs here in Finland. They are egg, e eggs, really, uh, where the seed cells, uh, they, uh, pr they are being produced there and held there until they come out. But uh, as long as a man, a, a man is uh, productive, then uh, they are coming out all the time there in those eggs. They, they also look like eggs. <laughs> when you feel them, you can feel them, of course, you too. <laughs> that you can feel if they are egg-shaped or whether they are round balls. And if they are round balls, then you don't have those seeds so well anyway. anyway. And uh, the, that man is becoming a homo also. 
he's come becoming homo. And uh, you, can, you can actually see when the boy is growing up, up to, let's say, 10 years old, you can, you can actually feel them then, if they are balls, that he's going to be homo, or they are egg-shaped, and uh, he's going to be um, uh, hetero. It comes from the mother, that uh, if mother had been eating a lot of sweet things, uh, sugar, for example, uh, sweet cakes, and things like that, then uh, her son will become homo. And you can, you can see it from these fingers. You can see it. I am hetero. And because uh, this finger, my, my first finger, mm -hmm. is, yeah. is shorter, shorter than yeah, than the, than when it's, uh, if it's shorter than uh, this uh, nameless, or this ring finger, you call this ring finger, if, the, if it's shorter than this ring finger, then you are hetero. But if this first finger is longer than the ring finger, then you are homo. And it's because uh, what the mother has been eating, or mother's mother, even uh, the Chinese say that it goes away um, uh, seven generations, even why may go back seven generations. Um, it's not only the sweet things, uh, the sugar and things like that, but also the chemicals. If you are using too many chemicals when you are young, and then, uh, then you will become also. Uh, women are uh, then uh, um, uh, lady lo lovers, and men, they become homos. But here you can see it. This is definitely, and uh, uh, because I knew uh, that uh, we have never been, my family has never been rich, uh, so we had not any sweet things to eat. And uh, Finland was also, during the war, we had uh, very little food here and no sweets at all. But I knew also what my mother had been eating before. So uh, let's say 150 years ago, and uh, her mother, and so on, way back. Uh, they have been, uh, they were quite uh, regular working people and uh, eating just the uh, food that the working people eat. Not any cakes or uh, sweet. Uh, uh, drinks or anything like that. But now I can see uh, I have two girls, but uh, the other girl is still alone, but uh, the other one is married. He has two boys. They are not heteros anymore. They have been, the, we have had so much better, or uh, I wouldn't say better, but uh, sweet things to eat, and much more chemicals to eat. Because uh, <laughs> it's uh, this yin and yang system, if you know anything about it. Have you heard? Yes. yes. The, sweet, uh, the Chinese way, yes. yin and yang. Um, so these people today, they are eating too much yin food. Um, but my uh, father and mother and uh, their fathers and mothers had been only eating more. Uh, even they were, there was both yin and yang, but my father ate more yang than yin, and women, of course, uh, women have to have more yin than yang food. And this line here, is the meridian, the meridian line that goes around the planet. There's another one that goes this way, so it divides the planet into four hemispheres. This ring here represents Udama or hell. The even cross is called Rasti, the Christian cross as they call it today is called Risti. 
you'll find that this is the American medicine wheel for the Red Indian. He has a ring with a cross in it, which represents the North Pole. These stones are almost 10,000 years old. They want to give a date of 600, 700, because that's when their whole history, their Viking history began. There's one sun, there's one moon, there's one planet, and there's millions and millions of stars.